Greetings, beautiful white positive people, brothers and sisters. Welcome aboard another day on the blue truck with the blue ninja for white well-being, where we do what we do every day, save our people. One of many apostles here, just like all of you, for white well-being to save our kind. Hope you're all doing well. Warmest greetings with all my love, respect, appreciation, admiration, and support as usual to each and every one for everything you all are doing to save our people. I'm just a humble person trying to keep up with all of you out there. <clears throat> Great ones of the West. Um, today is... <clears throat> Saturday morning, so I'll say good morning to everyone, maybe good evening to our European and Australian brothers and South African brothers. Um, Saturday morning, January 16th, 2021. Um, and I made a video last night, uh, which I'm not sure if I'm going to post because I was really tired <laughs> and kind of dragging on, kind of like I'm already dragging right now. Um, <laughs> so I'm not sure if this is going to be any better. Um, but, uh, um, we'll try it out. Um, here in Las Vegas and uh, where I've been since yesterday and I'm gonna be taking care of a few things today getting ready for my trip my much anticipated trip um, to see my little baby girl uh, over in Eastern Europe so you all know I am extremely excited about that. Um, T minus uh, two days to flight time, flight on Monday. So gotta take care of some stuff here. Um, personally, you know, unload some stuff on the truck, get myself, you know, packed and whatnot. Got some things, some requests to bring over there to Europe. <laughs> So it's, you know, it's always an interesting adventure. Um, so I'm going to be getting ready and then I'll be heading back to L.A. And uh, finishing up for the day, the night. <laughs> and then uh, tomorrow, I think I'll be just maybe a little bit of work. Hopefully not. I think I'll just be getting ready for the trip. Um, I have to get a COVID test, of course, um, uh, tomorrow. So I'll have to figure that out. That should be interesting. Um, anyway, so um, that's my plans here. Um, and uh, And I do appreciate everyone's comments. Um, as you all know, I've been behind on the commentary, been really behind on my email, trying to get ready for this trip, trying to being tired and all that, of course. So um, I see a lot of the comments, um, just haven't had a chance to really um, well, you know, uh, or the energy <laughs> to really spawn, respond uh, lately. Um, so, as you can all understand, I'm sure. Um, so, my apologies for that, uh, but, uh, but I know you all understand. I do appreciate and I do see a lot of the, the comments nonetheless. And 
and feel the love um, no matter what so so I'll let you all know I love and appreciate all of your comments no matter what um, even though I'm behind on them um, and uh, just appreciate all that support by putting commentary and showing love for me for all of our people um, that's one way we do it by just putting those words of positivity those insights out there on our videos um, so really really appreciate all that support for white well-being all the love and all that love and support is so right back at each and every one of you um, this is how we do it this is how we slowly rebuild our race from the ground up one by one one comment at a time one video at a time one word at a time one person at a time that's how we do it building a huge skyscraper one brick at a time right so that is the truth anyhow um, just wanted to give a shout out about the comments there and um, one in particular uh, well firstly Wilhelmina Bayer you always make so many great and lovely and beautiful and very insightful comments really want to always extend a special thank you and all my love straight from my heart to you my dear Wilhelmina and um, I love and appreciate you so much and, and thank you for all your support all your love all of your brilliant insight as usual um, and uh, Matthew your beautiful son Matthew as well love you brother appreciate everything you're doing uh, for me for all of us for Western kind and uh, donning armor art acrobats Brad C Irish ice no white guilt clips Nancy Drew Shona Shaw watch rider white rider white healing Ezra st. white DHMC um, everybody else out there appreciate love you all all my blessings and greetings <clears throat> and um, uh, one comment in particular I just saw by Sigurd the great Norwegian Sigurd Favnesbane up in Norway made a comment about my last video I think about how I was driving for so long for like a day and a night and uh, you know a day or two straight it seems like it's not exactly completely that it just feels like that a lot of times but I didn't read your full comment Sigurd but it looks like you were saying that uh, it's illegal to drive that much in Norway I didn't read the whole thing I'm guessing that's what you were saying I apologize if that's wrong but uh, based on the first little bit that I glanced at this morning it sounded like you were gonna say in Norway it's it's against the law to or illegal to drive a truck for and I'm guessing you said you know so long of a time like more than a day or more than so many hours and if that's what you said then uh, which I have to look at later then I will say there are those rules in America too it's not um, it's not just a free-for-all here there are rules there are daily limits on how many hours a truck driver can drive and weekly limits um, and uh, so you know that's we have those rules in place here it's 11 hours maximum driving every day in uh, here in America and uh, on the weekly limit is 70 hours so you know you're not supposed to go over an 11 hour day of driving but you can work for 14 hours doing other non-driving stuff and sometimes even more than 14 depending on the state California you can go more than that um, and then for the week you're not supposed to go over a 70 hour week some people kind of kind of bend it sometimes and find ways around it um, and now with COVID they flex on those rules if you're carrying food or drink um, you know food items so um, 
you know, there there are sometimes ways that those get uh, get fudged by people, um, and those rules get bent sometimes. <laughs> but they are there, just as a point of clarification here. Um, once upon a time, we didn't have those rules. I hear from old timers that they used to just, you know, in the 80s and before, there was no logs, there was no rules about the hours, so people used to just drive like maniacs back in those days so I've heard a lot of stories and uh, some of us have probably heard that kind of thing too trucking used to be totally insane and uh, now it's electronic so they can track your truck and everything and they can you know keep better tabs on the driving um, anyhow just a point there for you Sigurd uh, Favnes Bane um, we do have those rules in, here in America too. Sometimes they're bent. Anyhow, um, I know I could definitely use some more rest than I've been getting lately. Um, speaking of which, got coffee from yesterday still, uh, which I do need <laughs> desperately now. Um, so, um, Sigurd Favnes Bane, great champion of white well-being in Norway. Just want to point that out to finish off about the great Sigurd Favnes Bane. Um, representing white well-being up in Norway. And we thank you so much for that, brother. We really thank you deeply for representing our people, for answering the call up there in Norway. I don't know the exact situation in Norway. I've heard that it's getting bad there as well. Um, so you can comment more on that if you'd like, but I've heard some things, you know, like right along with Sweden, it's lots of immigrants, non-whites, that kind of white erasure from what I've heard, plenty of problems going on there as well. So spread across the Western world as we know, um, and, uh, we all need to keep each other updated and encouraged in serving our kind. Now enough coffee in me hopefully I can get this video going um, a uh, a way long intro there as usual <laughs> my apologies for that but I really want to give my love respect and appreciation to people as usual acknowledge all the beautiful wonderful commentary and uh, say that I'm <laughs> gonna catch back up eventually um, Anyhow, um, <clears throat> getting on to the main points for this video, I was going to basically what, um, I'll just put in here what I had on the video last night because <laughs> that video just, I just rambled on dribbled on for a while and I may just not post that um, but I'll just maybe try to highlight condense the points from that with a couple more brief points here and um, and then leave it at that so um, got some back of the envelope notes here uh, from last night that uh, using here to save our people just like engineers do back of the envelope cal calculations sometimes, you know, on a napkin, on an envelope, we can do the same thing to save Western kind. Isn't that amazing? That's how we're doing it. Back of the envelope um, from a truck is how it can be done. So if I can do it here with an envelope, then everyone can do it. And that's what we are all doing, indeed. Um, so I got some notes from last night and then just some, some points to highlight and then, um, in condensed form here and then, uh, some quick little examples of anti-whiteism, the anti-white attacks that we are facing on a daily basis. Just some examples of that. Cause as I talk about, we are under attack all the time. We are in a state of warfare 
in America. Most people don't even realize it. It's been disguised. And of course, the reason it's been disguised is so that we won't be able to respond. It's just like a virus in an organism that does not recognize the virus. It's just like the body's immune system. And I know we all know this. I've talked about it. I'm sure we're all aware. It is, that's what going free, of course, is all about, recognizing these pathogens in us. Now, we know that just like the human body, the immune system, um, the immune system is there to fight off pathogens, to fight off disease. Now, but we know that if the body does not recognize a pathogen as a pathogen, as harmful as a disease, it cannot fight it, and it will not fight it. And that is obviously, that's what HIV, as we all know, AIDS, uh, does. And that's why it is so deadly. It just disables the immune system. That's all it's doing. Um, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's not really, um, as far as I know, I'm definitely no expert on this, but, you know, it's just mainly, as most of us know, the main thing, HIV AIDS does is it disables the immune system and it can severely weaken it so much that, that people can die and um, so that tells us the importance of the immune system obviously and now the the importance of a properly functioning immune system the immune system obviously functions properly when it recognizes every pathogen that is harmful. It recognizes it as, and in medicine they call it, as we all probably know, a foreign body. Coincidence, probably not. Um, or just correlation here, oddly enough, fittingly enough. Um, when the human body, immune system, recognizes a foreign body, um, analogy to our situation intended when the human body recognizes a foreign body a foreign pathogen that is harmful to it then the immune system springs into action of course and it responds and it defends the body from that harmful pathogen um, in whatever way that it has to do it um, so the body is trying to defend against anything harmful. The body is always trying to heal itself. Um, now, we know that simply disabling that immune system will wreak havoc on the body. Then anything can come in and damage the body severely, potentially. So, obviously that's what makes HIV and AIDS so deadly. Um, such a harmful disease and of course in the same way our entire race of people as whites as westerners has been affected in the same way that is essentially what the anti-whites have done to the white race they have essentially given AIDS <laughs> HIV AIDS in that sense metaphorically to the entire white race to all of western kind so that our normal immune system, our normal defenses, our normal immune responses to keep our entire race healthy do not function properly. And in some cases hardly function at all. Um, so that is what they have cleverly done to us. Um, it is, they have disguised it. They have come in under the radar. Everything has been indirect and deceptive they have and disguised um, they um, they know that that's the only way that we can really be harmed is if we allow ourselves to be harmed if our if we are tricked into letting our immune normal immune system natural, defense be disabled and so that is how they are attacking us they are fooling a lot of people into thinking that we're not being attacked 
and just having it all fly under the radar. So obviously that is very harmful and powerful and potent because if an organism or a race or a people or anything does not recognize that it's being attacked, it will not respond, it will not defend, and it will just fall prey and victim and maybe even succumb to all of those attacks. So that is how they have cleverly, that, that is how they are cleverly trying to dismantle the white race by fooling us all as a whole into just thinking everything is fine. Just like the body thinking everything is fine even though it is being wilted away. Um, not recognizing the attack, the pathogens. So obviously that, just like AIDS, and HIV, that is what we have been afflicted with as an entire race, in my opinion. That's the analogy I think that can be applied. Our immune system, all these crazy ideas, diversity, multiculturalism, the R word, all those words, those are pathogens, those are tricks into also fooling us all into not having a normal immune defense response. And um, a lot of people, a lot of whites, obviously have fallen prey to this. <clears throat> so, um, so that's the first thing we need to do, obviously, is recognize, get our immune system back up to health, recognize that we are being attacked, that we are under heavy attack, we are in warfare right now. Our body is has is being is being constantly bombarded with pathogens. We need to restore our immune system to get it going back at full speed, full health, firing on all cylinders, and let's you know rally the troops of the immune system, so to speak. Get all hands on deck, and let's fend off the pathogens, the attacks, let's defend ourselves and let's get to work healing ourselves and restore our entire race back to health. Um, that's what we need to do, obviously. Um, we need to be all hands on deck, recognizing we have alarms going off, <laughs> so to speak, and uh, we need to put everything we have into healing ourselves from the diseases that are being targeted at us all the time. So, <clears throat> that's important, obviously. Now, a key point in restoring our immune system is something I've talked about before. And, uh, but it is very key and it is very, a lot of people go wrong on this because there are so many, there's so many things that misdirect. There's so much misdirection with this, uh, very intentionally. This is a big time trick that the anti-whites use to always steer whites off the wrong path, to always guilt whites into just suppressing their immune system and lowering their defenses just they con whites all the time into just completely letting our guard down um you know and in in the body we could say just completely turning off our white beautiful white blood cells we could say um and i'm not an expert on immunology but if i remember right the white blood cells are part of the immune system helping to fight disease. I could be wrong about that. Um, white blood cells and I think are a key part in, in fighting disease if I remember right. And then there's others, there's T cells and other stuff I think, but medical experts, biologists can uh, correct me on that. But um, it's kind of apropos, white blood cells. That's what fights off the attacks and defends us. So. Um, a lot of whites are really fall victim to a certain kind of misdirection all the time 
and it just causes whites to completely lower their defenses, turn off their immune system, and then they can, they're open to any attack. Now, just like the body is always fending off disease, there's always diseases, there's pathogens in the air that we breathe constantly. There is constantly things in the environment, bacteria, viruses, etc., 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 that can harm us. Our immune system is always normally at work to keep things in balance. In the same way, we need to be have our immunity going as a race. Now, so what I'm talking about here is something that Jason has talked about a lot. He talks about it all the time. This is a, a big time error that a lot of whites make. And even maybe people in the white positive sphere, even a lot of people are susceptible to this because it's constantly being, it's the constant narrative. And um, people have been programmed with this. Um, so what I'm talking about here is <clears throat> um, this where the focus is where is the focus now in order for us to restore our immune system the focus has to be on us white people it has to be on us white people that is where the focus needs to be Jason talks about this all the time and again it's very important because it is essential for us to properly restore ourselves to health and it is a big time misdirection that is always applied in the mainstream media we see it all the time it's a huge tool that the anti-whites use constantly to trick whites into lowering their defenses so um, this is an easy one for a lot of whites to get tricked on now because there's pressure it's it's a clever kind of disguise of this type of attack but we have to recognize um, what I'm talking about here is by keeping the focus on us <clears throat> is looking at the anti-white attacks in the form of a lot of times they will always they'll always put the emphasis on other races non-whites and how we feel about them so they the anti-white media tries to make it an issue of how whites look at other races and if the in the anti-whites have tried to equate they have tried to make that the issue that okay that's the issue how whites feel about non-whites and of course if whites somehow don't just accept and tolerate all non-whites and that's considered bad in the anti-white media and they've conditioned people to think that to always have whites thinking about how they're feeling about non-whites and how they have to accept them and tolerate them all the time and they've also conditioned whites to think that standing up for us somehow equates to not liking uh, you know other races they equate they've equated whites standing up for ourselves defending ourselves as somehow being equivalent to disliking other races non-white races um, and they have all kinds of anti-white slurs for that you know they they might call that hate speech so there's a lot of pressure there's a lot of conditioning there so a lot of whites will think about when they're talking about multiracialism when we're talking about the state of things they'll they'll instantly go into this mode of oh i i, I don't dislike non-whites i don't dislike other races etc etc and that is exactly what the anti-whites want they want white 
they want whites to always be justifying how they do not dislike other races, how we're not to the R word, R-A-C-I-S-T, just like Jane says, prove it. They want us to always be proving that. Prove that we are not R-A-C-I-S-T. Prove that we do not dislike uh, non-whites in any way. Prove that we are just so tolerant and accepting that it's insane. We're constantly being forced and programmed to prove how much we accept and like these non-whites. So people think that's what it's about. That's the intentional conditioning, to think that that's what it's all about. And of course, that is the error. That is the big error. It is not about other races at all. When people talk about, oh, hey, well, you know, I, I don't mind Asians. I mean, Asians are cool. <laughs> you know, when they want to talk about stuff like that. Oh, well, this particular non-white person of that particular race, I don't mind them. I don't mind these people. You know, I might uh, dislike what those non-whites are doing over there, but this other group, these other folks of this other non-white race, you know, I'm, I'm kind of okay with them. Um, and it's not about that at all. It's not about liking or disliking any non-white race, as we all know. It's, it is about the white race. It is about looking at us. It is about, okay, how are you doing, Mr. or Mrs. White person? Okay, yeah, you feel this way or that way about the non-whites. Great, cool. But that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how anyone feels about non-whites, whether they dislike them, particular non-whites, whether they dislike them or like them or any of that. What matters is, okay, that's completely just not the issue at all. What matters here is, okay, Mr. or Mrs. White person, how are you doing? How are you doing? What is your state? What is your condition as a white person? What is the state of your family? What is the state of your community? What is the state of your race? Okay, that's fine and dandy. You feel however you feel about non-whites. Cool. But how are you doing? How, how is your people doing? How are your people doing? How is the white race doing? That's the issue. How are we doing? And only us, just entirely the white race, does, is not affected by non-whites at all in the way that we look at this. Our entire focus is on whites and how are we doing? And how we feel about ourselves. That is the issue. The issue is how we whites feel about ourselves. It's not about how we feel about other races. It's not about that. In fact, we've been way too kind to them. and We've been way too unkind to ourselves. The issue is whites being mistreated by anti-whites and non-whites and also whites being mistreated by whites. Whites being mistreated by our own selves. So the issue is how are we whites doing? How do we feel about ourselves. And that's it. So we have to learn to feel good about ourselves again. That's the issue. The issue is we've been so white guilted the most white people do not feel good about their own race. So someone might be honestly saying they like non-whites better than the white race. That's the problem. That is a problem. 
we need to feel good about our own race. If we are white, then we need to like and love whites, <laughs> our own race. We obviously, that is a problem that we face. That is what we need to do. We need to really, that's the issue. We need to feel better about ourselves as a race. Our race has one giant self-esteem problem as a race. We need to start loving ourselves, loving our own race again, feeling good about our own race again, being proud of our own race again. That is the issue. The issue is how do white people feel about white people? How do white people feel about white people? Hey, Mr. White person, how do, how do you feel about whites? Not, not the Latinos, not the Asians, not the blacks, not the Islanders, the Indians, not anyone else. Okay, maybe you're cool with all them, whatever. Maybe you're not, maybe you are. Not the issue. That's not what's going on. That's not the disease that we're facing. Okay, if we're a doctor looking at a patient, that's not the disease at all. So the issue, what's eating us and plaguing us is, okay, Mr. White person, how do you feel about white people? How do you feel about the white race? How do you feel about yourself as a white person? How do you feel about other white people? That is the issue. That's where all the pathogens are inside of us white people. How we feel about ourselves. So that is the issue. It is not how whites feel about non-whites. That is not the issue at all. We have been poisoned with that to like and accept and tolerate them to harmful levels. We do that too well. The issue where we need help and healing is how we as whites feel about whites. That is the entire issue in its fullness, in its wholeness, in totality. That is the issue. How do whites feel about whites, period? That's the issue. And how we, what our condition is as a race, and obviously then recognizing that it's not so good, and then committing ourselves to improving it. So that is, we are in a state of warfare, we are being attacked, our white immune system has been weakened significantly by the anti-whites, by all these pathogens and misdirection. We need to recognize that we are under attack, we need to restore our immune system, reactivate our immune system, start defending ourselves and healing ourselves. How do we do that? We do that by going free going free of the anti-whiteism, going free of all those pathogens, applying cures, curatives, as Jason talks about, serving white well-being, becoming white positive, going free of white guilt, having no white guilt, ridding ourselves gradually over time of the white guilt, that, and gradually gaining pride in our race, that is how we heal, restore our immune system and restore our destiny. And a key part of that as Jason talks about a lot in many different ways, the focus has to be on us. Simply put, the focus has to be on us. Now, what that means, obviously, is all that talk about other races is just, it's really completely irrelevant. Unless it's affecting us, unless it's with regard or with respect to how it affects us. We can talk about non whites as long as it's with respect to and relevant to how it's affecting us. And they do affect us, but we need to keep it on to always, okay, we can talk about them only in the sense of how are they affecting us. So the focus is always on us as whites. This is how we heal. This is a key component 
in effectively healing ourselves. Keep the focus on you as a white person. Keep the focus on your people, on our people. That is how we address the problems and heal ourselves. Now, um, how do we um, what I said in the video last night which I'll just sum up here also is that we are we are like white blood cells healing our entire the, the body of our entire race we are doing that by spreading our curative um, contagion like Jason talks about to every other member of our body of our race as whites so obviously that's what we're doing we're spreading our message um, spreading our message of going free of white well-being to others other whites that is how we heal the entire body of our white race obviously we need to just spread our cure through the body which is our entire race and that's what we're all doing um, we're spreading it and trying to reach as many as possible as many whites trying to heal the entire white race um, so obviously that's our mission that's how we do it and that's what we're all doing and so we heal ourselves we heal other whites now the good thing about now as we all know is people are looking for answers more than ever before people are seeing the old ways of politics and so forth they're not working they have abandoned them those systems have abandoned them as white people people are seeing this more and more nowadays so people are really open more than ever before to looking for new methods and new ways of improving things uh, for our people so that's the silver lining Um, when I um, <clears throat> so this is why we can reach people with going free more than ever before this is why we have more opportunity than ever before things are worse than ever before there's more anti-whiteism than ever before but we have more opportunity than ever to reach people with white well-being so we need to take every opportunity we have. Now, as an example, last night when I went into this truck stop, there was a young lady, uh, a young white woman, very young, uh, working there, and um, talked with her at the cash register just a little bit, and just noticed she was short-haired, <laughs> tattooed, uh, maybe had some little bit of bright coloring or something in the hair, some jewelry, in odd places not exactly what I would call ladylike um, and just we see this a lot when white people tattoo themselves dye their hair weird colors put piercings in weird places maybe wear some odd clothes <laughs> clothing um, there's a certain look that a lot of whites have that sort of signal that they're anti-white a sort of it's, it's a lot of white noir, as we know, they're trying not to be white. They're trying to white flight and escape being white. And they're also trying to blend in. They're trying to signal that they're going along with the anti-whiteism. In a lot of cases, that's what it is. Um, and just as if it's predictable as ever, they are doing it in response to all the anti-whiteism, obviously. I mean, people I've just... 
I have never noticed it as much as I do nowadays in recent times how many whites are have have tattoos and uh, are dyeing their hair weird bright colors and etc and defacing themselves just defacing and defiling their bodies it is obviously it's because of the anti-whiteism they sense it it's in response to that now obviously this is white noir this is white flight we all know this we've talked about it before this is very sad this is why people are looking for answers this is a cry for help from whites that do this this is why they need the help they don't see any other way they don't know what's going to work they resort to defiling their bodies in an attempt to not be white or maybe be anti-white so that's why deep down hopefully they'll be open to something that works they just need to know what's going to work we need to reach these people whites that have tattoos all over their bodies whites that have dyed hair etc etc we need to reach all the whites out there especially these kind of whites um, suffering from grievous white noir now so how do we give permission to others to be white positive a lot of people as I've talked about before need that permission they need something that tells them it's okay to be white positive because we know that it is attacked very much so in society now people that are white positive it is attacked people have you know a a a, a real reason to be afraid of doing it they see attacks on people that show white positivity sometimes so people do feel a fear to express white positivity to talk in this way um, people do have this feeling that it's not okay it's not acceptable in society I want to talk about a tool real quick that we can give that we can show others that it is okay because what you always want to do with yourself and with others is you want to send yourself the message and s tell others send others the message that it is okay to be white positive it is it is okay it is acceptable and not only that but it is a very good thing the best thing we can do people really need to get that message that it's okay to be that way it's okay to feel good about whites it's okay to even say good things about whites people need that message they need that assurance now we need it ourselves we have to give it to ourselves constantly so now it's important that what you do and you say affirms that it's okay you have to act as if it is totally acceptable to talk in a white positive way to defend your people in a peaceful and honorable way to love your people it should be totally acceptable and normal to you to love your people and support your people and express it when necessary it should just be automatic and it should be considered a good and normal thing to do now you need to always give yourself that message <clears throat> first and how do we give ourself that message we can do affirmations a lot of us know affirmations is a tool so we can say to ourselves how do you give yourself permission you just say to yourself I give myself permission to fill in the blank so these are the affirmations I think we can all use I give myself permission to be white positive I give myself permission to go free I give myself permission to have no white guilt to go free of white guilt I give myself permission to serve white well-being I choose to serve white well-being 
So think about the power of that. You simply tell yourself this, these words will get into your brain, they'll affect your thinking, they'll affect the way you feel. And when you change the way you feel, you can change the way others feel. So you simply say to yourself, I give myself permission to be white positive. I give myself permission to go free. I give myself permission to speak with the white positive lexicon. I give myself permission to serve white well-being each and every day. You keep saying that over and over and over again, as we all know, and it starts to be part of how you really feel. Okay. I give myself permission. I guess I do have the permission. I guess it's okay. I guess it's good. You convince yourself more and more all the time of this truth. This is reality, the way we should feel. And we have every justification and more to feel this way. You give yourself these affirmations. You, 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 you affirm that feeling in yourself. Then you can change it in other people. So you are feeling that, yes, it's completely okay that I express white positivity. It's completely okay. It's good. You feel your, that yourself. How do you give other people that permission? One of the most powerful ways to give others permission to do something, I think, and I've talked about a little bit before, is to do it yourself. How do you give others permission to do something, to behave in a certain way, to talk in a certain way? You do it yourself and you speak with those words yourself. That's one of the most powerful ways that you can subconsciously and, un, un, and unconsciously, on an unconscious level, give people that permission. <clears throat> on, a, on, a, on a subconscious and unconscious level, you give people that permission to do something when you do it yourself. So, how do we get people over this fear? How do we get people to really feel that, yeah, it's okay that I can talk like that, that I can stand up for my people? As we all know, we do it ourselves. You want others, we want others to talk with our lexicon. How do we do it? We talk with the lexicon. And like Jason talks about, you let others hear you. You let an audience hear you if it's appropriate, if the opportunity is there. You let them hear you speaking with our lexicon, using words like anti-white, white positive, white well-being, going free. Let them hear us saying these words. Whether it be someone you're talking to, an audience, obviously, ideally white people is who we want to hear this. When people hear others, when they hear us speaking this way, using these words, they will instantly, unconsciously, subconsciously get the message that, ah, it's okay. It must be okay to talk like that because they're talking like that. That is how we tell people it's okay to talk like this. It's good. Please do it. We don't have to explicitly say that. And a lot of times that might not be as effective as just doing it on the subconscious level, doing it. And people tend to follow suit when they see it gaining momentum. So that is how we give others permission to be white positive, by doing it ourselves. Very powerful method there. Now, the last thing is I've gone on way longer than planned, as usual, um, that I was going to talk about. It's just a few examples of the anti-white attacks that we are under and facing every single day. Like I talked about on the last video, the warfare is everywhere. That is what takes true courage to have everyday conversations with people in a white positive way. To address the anti-whiteism in a direct way using our white positive lexicon with everyday folks out doing everyday things. That is what takes the true courage as we all know. So 
as an example of the warfare that we are facing. And again, like I've talked about before, Yuri Bezmenov, a lot of you probably know him, has talked about this. That the CIA, the KGB, they don't do secret as many, it's not all totally secretive things like people may think. It is stuff out in plain sight. All the propaganda, all the advertisements that we see, the way society, the messages in society, most of that is done, orchestrated by organizations like the CIA, the KGB, that did that in Russia um, when they brainwashed people there. Um, it's all the stuff in plain sight that those anti-white organizations of power do. That is the warfare. And just like Yuri Bezmenov said, he said, he even said specifically to America, as I've mentioned before, you think you're in peacetime? That's the biggest mistake you're making. You're not in peacetime. You're at war. Yuri Bezmenov, as an ex KGB agent, that a lot of us have probably heard him talk. If you haven't heard him talk, look him up. Yuri Bezmenov. He explains a lot of this stuff. And he knows all about their tricks that they do. And he said, um, he talked about demoralization, destabilization, the phases that they'll do to slowly disable and cripple a country. America, they've been at it for a long time with us, and now we're just almost in shambles. And um, he, Yuri Bezmenov, makes it nice and plain, and he says, <laughs> he says, um, he says, he says that's the mistake most Americans make, is thinking, well, especially whites, even though he didn't say that, is uh, thinking that you're at peace. He said, America, Americans, and really we're talking about white people here, you think you're at peace? Big mistake. You are at war. You're not at peace time. You are at, you're in war time. So we are in... We are at war, we are in wartime, we are in stream, in extreme warfare, and a lot of it, most of it is psychological. We are all aware of this. Um, that's what makes us the proud and the going free and the white positive. Now, of course, we fight this war with a psychological defense, like Jason talks about. We fight it peacefully and metaphorically with words. So as an example of some of the just couple small examples that you could see on a daily basis of attacks, just to recognize where the attacks are, to restore our immune system, is just as you can see on every media news site every single day now, just one example, looking at Google. So what do I see on Google first off? Something about how COVID uh, has killed people's motivations. And as they put it here, has killed your motivation. In so many ways, how to get it back, according to science, they say. Why, why COVID has killed your motivation? How to get it back, according to science, they say. So now, let's notice where the attack is. Who is pictured there? That is a white person. That is a white male. That is a young white man looking depressed, looking just um, in despair, right? Looking down. Um, so is it an accident that it's a white man being showed there? As we all know, not at all. Completely done on purpose, the fact that he's white the position that he's in, looking in despair, hands over his face, looking like there's no hope, blaming it on COVID instead of anti-whiteism, which is the real cause. That is put out by CNBC, extremely anti-white, anti-white controlled and owned through and through. Now, that is exactly... That is an attack because that is exactly the way the anti-whites want white people to look and feel and behave. This is the programming they're putting out to white people, especially white men. They want us to behave like this. They want us to just give up, put our head in our hands, 
have no hope, be in total despair, and just anguish over that. That is the mean pathogen, that is the attack, that is poison. Um, and that makes us weak. Obviously, we don't want to do that. We want to take hope. We want to keep at, keep working, keep at work, and doing what we're doing, spreading our message of going free and white well-being to save our people. That's what we need to be doing. That is what they don't want us to be doing. This is the only thing they don't want us to be doing: spreading our message. That is why we must keep doing it. Then I see a couple more articles, the one on top, a small article about a COVID vaccine and apparently what to do after taking the vaccine. And they say just pretend it didn't happen. I assume they're talking about the pandemic. Once you get that vaccine, just pretend uh, pretend the whole pandemic didn't happen. That's, that's what I'm gathering there. So they're just acting like, eh, once you take the vaccine, just... Uh, carry on as normal and uh, just act like the pandemic never happened convenient story there another side note is there's a Japanese soccer team being showed there apparently a kid uh, a guy that met uh, Ronaldo Cristiano Ronaldo years back and now he's a champion soccer player in Japan just a nice little story there now just a quick note what do we notice about that Japanese soccer team Every single one of them is Japanese. Is there any kind of a complaint about a lack of diversity there? Obviously not. <clears throat> Every single one, 100% Japanese, no complaints from the anti-white media because obviously the media is not anti-Japanese, they are anti-white and only anti-white. That is why we know diversity is a weapon. It is nothing more than a weapon. Same with all those other words. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. Attacking whites, wanting white men to put our head in our hands, feeling despair. Oh, we've lost motivation because of COVID, misdirection. That's an attack on white people. The stuff about the COVID vaccine think is questionable to say the least that is misdirection um, and uh, just a little example about how every race can be celebrated in the anti-white media except for whites and how um, lack of diversity is not a problem for non-whites, um, it's only a problem, uh, according to the anti-white media, when there's no diversity among whites. So uh, we need to just more evidence that that is just a weapon. That's all it is. That's all it ever was. That word is a weapon against white people only. So we need to wake up and be wise to all of it. All of us are. Uh, becoming wise to it and are wise to it and um, our immune systems are being restored so let's keep gathering strength keep regaining our health and by God let's all keep going free I have to cut myself off here and get myself moving take care of what I need to do today I'll catch you all from LA later I love you all God bless each and every one of you Stay strong and stay white positive.